CCSD is the fifth largest school district in the nation, with student success as its number one goal. Join us as we meet student go-getters and goal setters and discover their skills, talents, and drive. Plus, meet the incredible staff who are helping students shine. It's all here in Student Spotlight. Hi everyone, I'm Melinda Malone. And I'm Mauricio Marin. Welcome to Student Spotlight. We have so much to share with you during the next half hour. We'll take you to the field of Allegiant Stadium with some of our high school student athletes. You'll meet an exceptional teacher. In fact, she's been named the National Teacher of the Year. Our student correspondent will bring you district news as well as fun facts from her elementary school. And CCSD Superintendent Dr. Jesus Jara sits down with some high school seniors to talk COVID, high school, and hopes for the future. But we begin by shining the spotlight on a Rancho High School senior. He's headed to college on an Ivy League scholarship. He will be the first in his family to attend college. My name is Luciano Romero. I currently go to Rancho High School and I will be um, attending Yale University in the fall. In our family, I would say in my um, financial situation, education wasn't really prioritized. It was more about, like, it was more of a secondary thing. Um, it was more of surviving and just getting by. So I would say that uh, I really focus on my education as a gateway to get out of that situation. And since the beginning, I never really thought of myself as an Ivy League student or someone who could achieve that level of prestige. And so when I opened my decision letter on December 1st, I was in complete shock. It's just an honor, I think, for me as an educator to see, to see the drive, but also to see that, that um, as I call it in Spanish, las ganas, that will to do better for his family and for himself. That is inspiring and that is the reason why we do what we do in schools. Uh, I have had multiple privileges in not needing to um, have a job to support my family. And I will say that's one of the contributions that has contributed to my success in going into Yale. Because I know that not many um, students, especially here at Rancho, where a lot of uh, our student population is below the poverty line, cannot afford to do that. They need to get a job to support their family. And I would like to highlight that my successes have been a culmination of all my privileges that I have been given and all the financial and emotional support that my parents and family have given me. His achievement, I couldn't, and he got goals. I never made it, and he's gonna do it. You know what I mean? It's something, it's, it's, he's the first generation, but uh, I'm very proud of him, and I think he's gonna do the things really well on his way. I'd like to thank my parents for always telling me to not only achieve those dreams, but be the best at what I can be. The class of 2021 is full of amazing stories and accomplishments. Superintendent Dr. Jesus Jara had the chance to sit down with some CCSD star graduates. Lucky for us, it was right here at the Vegas PBS studio. I want to thank all of you for making time out of your busy schedule as high school seniors to join me here for a chat. So I wanted just to really have a conversation and it gives me an opportunity on a couple things. I want to learn not only about this year, but then also for your 12 years um, as a student here in Clark County, because for me it's so important to hear your voice, to see what we can always do better. So I want to thank you for, for joining us, but let's start with some introductions. Well, hello everyone, my name is Sydney Turner. I'm a senior at Liberty High School. One of my many lists of volunteering or community service and I am an ID at BSU at Liberty High School and I'm attending Hampton University. Excellent, and forgot to give you a little, you can take your mask off because we're, we're social distancing just for when you speak so we can hear you. So, Alex. Hi everybody, uh, I'm so happy to be here with you all. I'm Alex Gallegos from El Dorado High School, and this year I served as the student member to the Nevada State Board of Education, and then next year I'll be attending American University in Washington, D.C. to study poli-sci. Excellent, and next? Uh, hi, I'm Kyra Larson. I'm from Wapa Valley High School, and I'm also the student body president for Wapa Valley High School. I was also the 4-H president for our senior group and uh, I play so been playing soccer for four years, and I plan on attending Dixie Tech in St. George to study their digital media design. Excellent, thank you for joining us. Uh, Justin. 
Um, hello, my name is Justin. I attend Southwest Career and Technical Academy. I'm in the automotive program and I'm pretty involved in community service. I'm in HOSA NHS Key Club. I try to be involved with leadership, like vice, being a vice president of HOSA. And I'm gonna be attending Rose Holman Institute of Technology for mechanical engineering in my next four years. Excellent, thank you, welcome in. Nicola? Hello, my name is Nicola. I am a theater major at Del Sol Academy. Um, I have been running cross country, playing basketball, and also track and field for the past four years. And um, after this, I'll be going to Elmhurst University. I, I really want to know a little bit about this past, I would say, 14, 15 months. Tell me a little bit about what this year, you know, kind of what you've missed, uh, what you've been able to be flexible. Uh, so tell me a little bit about this past year, what, it, what has happened to you and, and your friends and what you want to share with me as a superintendent. Oh, well, this year has obviously been tough. We can't go to prom or grad night or just things like that. Um, what sucks for me is I'm involved in sports such as soccer and tennis. So I usually play outside of my school. Um, I got a USTA membership in the beginning of quarantine. So I only got to play one tournament for one month, but at least I got two magazines from it in the past year. Yeah. <laughs> but um, regarding my volunteering, I'm obviously very involved with my community. I like to go to community center or Ronald McDonald house and just being stuck inside has really been a problem for me. So I try to help uh, my school and my community by doing online activities. Um, I'm the vice president of HOSA, so I try to make online opportunities for our members to get hours. I also try to host like fundraisers for Three Square or blood drives to just try to help the Las Vegas community during this tough time. Kyra, tell me a little bit about what this year has, you know, what you've missed, but then also what different skills that you've been able to pick up this past year? Yeah, I think it's a little different for me because I come from a rural town. So a lot of what we did that we weren't able to do with the school, we were able to rally our community together and do it different ways, which is why I became the 4-H president, was to hold activities for not just the seniors, but the whole school. Like we did some outside movies and we did like uh, water, kickball, like, and I think a new skill I picked up from that is being able to talk to like adults and like been able to like reach out to people more than I would in a regular school year because in the school year you just stay within the asking like the high school like staff mostly for stuff so I was able to reach out and like meet new members and it was really fun good thank you Alex so I know you've been in meetings I've seen you in in Google Meets I've seen you obviously you know and I actually I saw you when we were interviewing for your principal you were your SOT member uh, hiring your new principal so tell me for sure, I have definitely been very involved and I think that this was a necessary change in a lot of ways um, mm. because of how it was before. I think that I was just um, too comfortable being in control of so many things at once. So I kind of had to lose control of a couple of things. Uh, so that was something that I learned this year. I also learned how to build a community uh, digitally, which I didn't think I would ever have to do that. Uh, but I'm involved in my school with student council a lot um, at my school level and at the state level. So I was able to collaborate with a bunch of people, even adults too, um, and build a community and really uh, bring people together even though they couldn't physically be together. Well, that's good. Nicola? Um, so for me, it was also really hard to stay in the house because the past four years, I'm always running around all the time. I would go to school and then have theater or track and then have to go to my theater community called Broadway in the Hood. I also did a lot of stuff for them while quarantine was kind of going on. We were doing TV shows on Facebook. Um, most of my community sadly didn't come from my school. I did most of my community on my own through social media. I set up a private story on Snapchat um, for a bunch of people who said they were going through tough times or people who just needed a check in. So I would offer myself that time every day. There was a different activity. And on Wednesdays, we had wellness check Wednesdays, which I would send them a message. How are you doing? Send me an emoji, see how you guys are doing. And if they need to talk, I was there. Because sadly in high school, we don't really like to talk to adults, which is kind of sad. And I think we need to see more community there, but it was good to help out people. 
Well, so I'm glad you're talking to me um, as an adult. So no, thank you. But it's really so important to hear from all of you, you know, the common themes. You, you just really got engaged just differently, um, which is the power of the beauty of our kids. So, so thank you for sharing. So now uh, when we look at what has been your biggest takeaway? What has been in, in the 12 years, if you've been here in Clark County School District for 12, 13 years, or if you moved here, what is your one big takeaway that you, you say, you know what, I've learned so much and I'm taking this with me? My biggest takeaway here in Clark County School District would be meeting the staff and the, like the teachers, the principal, the counselors here at Liberty High School. Um, it was a great experience because my counselor, who actually nominated me for this star grad, um, he really helped me. He was one of the counselors that really helped me. He was there whenever I needed him, asked questions, any advice, um, and just such as teachers. They would be there when I need help, um, and we'll just, you know, be there whenever I need them. <laughs> Good. Her? Um, I think my biggest takeaway was how much teachers really do care, because the only reason my school was able to be like in, like, because we were in school full time and then the other half of the year, not full time, but hybrid. And then halfway through the year, we got to go back full time it was because of our teachers fought for us and like really wanted us to be in there. They did, I got the email, so, <laughs> so your teachers were great. Yeah, so I think that's my biggest takeaway is that teachers really do care about you and they want to see you succeed. Good. My biggest takeaway is definitely time management and positivity throughout, through everybody. Time management has been a really big thing even since I was in elementary school because I was always involved in so much stuff with school or just outside in the community. So being able to be on time for everything, when you're on time, you get to ask questions if you're confused about something or you just get an even bigger and better experience. And then for positivity, whatever you put in the world, you're gonna get back no matter what. So if you output positivity, positivity will come back to you and you just need to be like that as a person to everybody. Perfect, thank you. So 30 seconds, so you're superintendent of the Clark County School District. What one thing you would change? Um, one thing I would really change is wellness checks and bullying throughout middle school and high school especially. Thank you. Justin? So if I was superintendent first, I would, I'm advocating for my school and like all the other tech schools, I would first just give sports to everyone. Got it. <laughs> my school doesn't have sports and people have been wanting it for the longest time. Thank you. Uh, I think I would change the way like some rules are because because from a, I'm a rural school, so some of the rules that apply to some of the big city schools that are applied to us, sometimes we don't really feel like they make sense. Yeah. So I feel like I would change how we look at city schools and rural schools that are in the same district. Got it. Alex? But I'm a huge advocate for mental health resources, so I think that we really need more school psychologists here uh, to help kids, and I think there's always more room in that area. Sydney, close us out here. What one thing, a superintendent of Clark County School District, what would you change? I would change, such as Alex said, um, wellness checks, such as wellness checks, mental health, bullying, also more um, information about scholarships and colleges. Well, you know, again, thank you for, for being here with me. It's so important for this community. I'm gonna say this to our community. Our future in the Clark County School District is bright. We have phenomenal children that are leaving us. So again, congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Jara. To learn more about the CCSD star graduates, head to ccsd.net where many of the seniors you just met are featured. But before we move on, there is one more star graduate we'd like to introduce you to. Please meet a Mission High School senior who has overcome so much. He has dedication, discipline, and a drive to help others. My name is Landon. I'm graduating at Mission High School. If I wasn't here graduating today, I would be dead. And that's the truth because the reason I'm here today is because I OD'd at 14, came out of the hospital and came here. And ever since I've been doing like the work, I've been putting in the work. When you listen to a kid say that if this place didn't exist, that they might not be alive to even think about graduation. So that's huge. I mean, today, 
I look at myself with a lot of like respect because I look at myself as a leader. After I graduate, I want to go and get my certification for a peer recovery specialist. And then after that, come here and work and then go to college and hopefully get a degree in, in counseling, drug and alcohol counseling. I want to help kids like me, you know. Without this school, I don't know where I would be today. This is not just changing their life, it is saving their lives. And it's just like, the people here helped me so much and I would like to like help other kids the same way they helped me. I'm just super excited to see him walk across the stage and then have him back here helping other students. He's amazing. We agree, he is amazing. Thank you to Landon for sharing your story and all those staff at Mission High School. Now let's head to Frank Kim Elementary School for some district news from Julie, one of our student correspondents. Hi, my name is Julie and I go to Frank Kim Elementary School and I'm here with your first news break. Did you hear graduation ceremonies will happen in person? Companies partners offered up a large venue to use. Ceremonies locations include MGM Grand Garden Arena, Orleans Arena, and the Thomas and Mack Center. Congratulations to all of the graduating seniors. Our district has more than 18,000 educators, and we love our teachers very, very, very much. Every week in May, we get to say thank you to our teachers during Teacher Appreciation Week. Check out some of the cool messages on social media. One teacher made national news. We'll tell you more later, but back to the studio. Thank you, Julie. As she mentioned, one CCSD teacher just made national headlines. Juliana Ertebe, a special education teacher at Booker Elementary School, was just named the National Teacher of the Year. Students call her Miss Earth. We were there for the big announcement. I'm advocating for a joyous and just education. By joyous, I mean that every student has a deep sense of belonging in their school because the school uplifts who they are. And by just, I mean that teachers are working collectively to build educational learning spaces where we give students everything they need to thrive. One of the things that I love the most is I love learning in the garden. The garden was a metaphor for having a growth mindset. A growth mindset means that you know that you can learn, that the brain is malleable, and that is so powerful for people with thinking and learning differences, and that mistakes are a critical part of our learning. We have to be responsive to who our communities are. I think my secret is being able to connect not just with my students, but their families and community. I take the time to understand who they are, their journeys, their struggles, their stories, and uplift them in, in a way that brings their strengths forward. Um, creating spaces in schools where families feel nurtured and welcome upon entrance is key. All of our families need to feel that and we know that right now they don't and so we need to make sure that we are looking inward and really assessing for what, what the barriers are and working actively to dismantle those barriers and recreate possibilities for children. Ms. Ertebe is the first National Teacher of the Year from Nevada. She will spend the next year serving as an ambassador for students and teachers across the nation. CCSD student athletes got to feel a little bit of what it's like to play professionally thanks to the Las Vegas Raiders. Hundreds of local football players got the opportunity to lace up their cleats and experience what it feels like to play in an NFL stadium. Here's Brian Callahan. While they were wearing Falcons, Rams, and Cowboys logos on their jerseys and helmets, there was little doubt the hundreds of CCSD football players who had the chance to take the field at Allegiant Stadium were instant fans of the Las Vegas Raiders. Amazing, man. Like, in the bus, whole team, just, we didn't even know what to say. We were, we were shocked. We were, had no words. It was insane. This is my favorite team since I was little. Everybody loves this team now that we're here, and it's just very grateful that we get to be a part of this. Eight teams laced up their cleats in hopes of building highlight reels similar to those Derek Carr, Josh Jacobs, and the other Raiders build every Sunday during the NFL season. Definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience and never forget it. The generosity of the Raiders came out of discussions of ways to help motivate players who were unable to play during their regular season due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Organizations, and it was just in a conversation I had uh, with uh, with their, uh, you know, uh, president of the organization, and I said, "Hey, Mr. Bourdain, uh, what are the chances?" You know, and I was really looking for the practice field. And when we came back and they said we made Allegiant Stadium happen, uh, I, I immediately called them and thanked them. I mean, and this is what they want to be. They want to be community partners, and they are. And uh, you know, here, opening the doors, and kids are going to have a great opportunity. I don't see that there's any other. Uh, NFL team that's doing this during these times for our children. While the Raiders made the stadium available, Superintendent Jesus Jara said the most stressful part of the process was the random selection of the teams who got to take the field. Uh, you drew the names, right? I did, I did. It was uh, what we did is we put all, it was a lot of pressure. <laughs> it was a lot of pressure just making sure, you know, because out of 20, they only had nine because of just the way the schedule worked out. For the schools selected, the time on the field was a memory that will last a lifetime. It means a lot, especially to me. I don't know about everybody else, they're Raiders fans, but since the Raiders and I'm a Raiders fan, this it's hit home to me, so it made me feel really good. That was Brian Callahan reporting. Thank you, Brian. Now let's kick it back to Julie at Frank Kim Elementary School. Hi, I'm Julie again from Frank Kim Elementary School, and I have another news break for you. Did you know that I have a book vending machine at my school right here? This is especially made for our school. It's because it's named Frank Kemp because it was especially made for our school. It's a great way to build our home libraries. But don't forget that public libraries are great places to find books during summer. And many libraries are offering special reading programs. So check out the library in your neighborhood. May is Asian American Heritage Month. It means a lot of to us, it's because my school was named after Franken. I have his detective and police belt. He was a first Asian American detective. And that's why the school is named after him. And that's it. Now have a great summer vacation, everybody. And spend time with your family, too. And as Julie said, that does it for this first edition of Student Spotlight, where we feature students and the staff that make our students successful. A quick reminder that the new school year starts August 9th. Students will attend school full time, face to face, five days a week, unless they opt to continue with distance education. Have a safe and wonderful summer. See you next school year.